Yo, how's it going everybody? So in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how to set up and use data grid for material UI. This is going to be a pretty simple tutorial that is pretty close to how the actual documentation shows how to use this component. And I'll just show you guys how to set it up, how to use it and how to dynamically get some data. And uh, this is the example we're going to be building right here. It's a data grid of a bunch of NBA team, uh, NBA teams with their city abbreviation, conference and division and is paginated so we can go through and see all 30 teams. All right, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna assume that you already have a React app made. If you don't have one made, just go ahead and make one. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna be doing is we are actually going to be installing all of our dependencies that we need for this to work. And what that's gonna be is npm i at emotion slash react at emotion slash styled at mui slash material mui slash x data grid this is for data grid and axios cool so now we have all the dependencies installed that's all you have to do from that and i'm going to go ahead and just start my app up in the background and what i'm going to do is i've created this fo folder called components and inside of there i'm going to create a new file and i'll call it data grid so data grid.js and i'm just going to go ahead and copy this stuff right here and just paste it into here just so we have some template code and I'm going to get rid of this import CSS and I'll do import react comma curly braces. So we're going to be using a few different things, use effect and use state. So that's just going to be use effect and use state from react. And the second thing that we're going to be importing is going to be from data grid. So that'll be import data grid from at m u i slash x dash data dash grid and finally we're going to import axios so that's going to be import axios from axios and that's it all right so now we have all of our imports that we need i'm going to go ahead and edit our component name so it makes more sense so this is uh, let's call it data grid for nba teams because this makes sense we're making a data grid of nba teams and i'm going to get rid of this class name app because we don't need it there will be no styling in this tutorial and i'll just go ahead and export it right here perfect so now what i'm going to do is create all of our stuff we need for the actual api so i'll do const data and set data is equal to use state in an empty array block and I'll do const get uh, NBA team data is equal to async and we'll do await axios.get uh, the URL is going to be https colon double slash www.balldontlie.io slash api slash v1 slash teams and then we'll do dot then and inside of the dot then I'll just do a simple response I'll just do res so double braces res arrow function curly braces and inside of here I'm gonna go ahead and set our data to be res dot data dot data the way that this API is actually um, created you actually have to go through the response then you have to go through data and then you have to go through data again and then finally, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just call this function. So that'll just be a use effect. And I'll do arrow function right here. And I'll just go ahead and call the function. So that'll just be get NBA team data. And I'll do an empty array blocks like so. And just to make sure that we actually are getting some sort of data from the API, I'll just go ahead and just console log it right over here. So console.log data and for some reason we have our async block inside of braces there we go and now if we actually go into the app we should see in our console that we're getting some sort of team data let's refresh no we are not huh let's see here what are we missing oh right we also have to import the actual component that's what I forgot so to import it that's just gonna be 
data grid for NBA teams. And now if I go back into it, we should see once it's done compiling that we will get some data. Perfect. Now we got all 30 teams. Now let's go ahead and display this in a, a uh, data grid. All right, so I went ahead and created this variable called columns right here, and that's associated to an array of objects. Now you might have guessed what columns is going to be used for. It's going to be used to display our column headers and to associate what pieces of ID go underneath those column headers. So the first thing that we have right here is called field. This is going to be responsible for telling each row what the, that piece of ID is going to be associated under. So if you had, uh, for example, in the NBA API, we have uh, conference. Oh, we're not even using conference. Oh, we are using conference. So right now we have conference right here. So whatever piece of data that has a uh, key of conference, it would be underneath this conference column header. And the next thing we have right here is called header name. Header name is just going to be the basic HTML text that is going to be presented inside of the actual individual column cell. So if I did like ID, then you would see ID on that column header. If I did like applesauce, then it would be applesauce instead of ID. And the next thing we have right here is called width. This is just some simple styling. I'm just going to increase our width or decrease our width, whatever you want. Um, according to the actual documentation for data grid, there's lots of cool properties that you can have for column types. I could talk about this for like an entire video, but I don't want to waste more time here. So I would highly recommend that you check it out. It's uh, It has some really cool information about how to use it in more depth. Next, let's talk about rows. Cool, so for rows, this is going to be even simpler. Um, in this case, since we don't actually have static data to display for the rows and we're pulling data from an API, it'll look a little bit more differently than what you'll see in the actual documentation. But let me just show you guys how to actually use an API and display the rows. So I'll make a variable and I'll call it const rows is equal to data dot map. So we're going to be looping over the uh, the data use state variable and I'll give it a parameter of row with an error function and curly braces and inside of these curly braces what we're going to be doing is we are going to be associating all of these fields to each piece of row so I'll do ID and oh right that's what I forgot to do so we need to do curly brace and then squiggly curly brace. I don't know their specific names, but I like to call it curly and squiggly now. So <laughs> I'll do ID and row dot ID. And in this case, we're just literally just uh, copying these values right here. So we have row ID. Next thing we have abbreviation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it because I know I'll misspell it. And I know I'll come back to this tutorial like 30 minutes later and I wouldn't understand why I messed it up. So now we have row abbreviations, next thing city, row.city, conference, and that's just going to be row.conference as well. Next thing is going to be division, and that's going to be row.division. I think we covered all of them, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, perfect. So now let's go ahead and actually display our data grid. That's going to be really simple. So inside of my return, I'm going to do data grid with a self, well, not data grind, the self closing brace. And instead of there, I'll do rows is equal to rows, columns, you guess it, is equal to columns. Now, this property we can do page size. So let's do page size. Let's do like six well let's do 10 yeah uh rows per page options let's do 10 should be fine as well and i think that's about it that we really need for this basic tutorial so let's go ahead and actually see what it looks like now and we have nothing good good that makes absolutely no sense Right, okay, right, 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 okay, that makes sense. See, we never give it a height. 
so instead of this div right here, I'll just do style is equal to height, and I'll do like 500 width 100%. And now, hopefully, for the love of God, please show me something. Perfect. See, I was I was knew it was gonna come up. All right. So now we can see that we are pulling data from our NBA API. We have. There we go. Now we have like we have ten results showing right here. Each of them underneath the proper columns, and we also have pagination right here. Perfect. So that concludes the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. If it did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And you might be wondering why did I select this team in particular? It's because they're going to win the championship this year. Okay, bye.